Kia ora year 12 and 13. In this video I'm going to go through part of task D on your revision sheet. Um, but instead of doing the identities one, I'm going to move down to the third problem and look at this equation and see what we can do with it. So we've got um, on the left hand side 2 sine of 2x plus pi on 3 plus 4 and on the right we've got 3 cos of the same thing plus 4. So the first easy thing to do is going to be to subtract 4 from both sides. Make sure as usual you've got your pen and maths book with you. Um, you're not going to get much out of this just by listening to me rabbiting on. So let's do that bit together and now pause the video and take a look and try to figure out the next little step. Okay well what you need to spot here is our basic definition of tan theta. So tan is equal to sine theta over cosine theta. Right? Thinking right back to year 10, we think first of all of sine as being opposite over hypotenuse and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is opposite over adjacent. So that's still very helpful right through um, trickier trig problems and it's going to help me here. So this time I'm going to divide through both sides by cos 2x plus pi on 3 and I'll get this 2 sine I'm doing going to do this super slowly lots of little steps feel free to skip ahead if you know what to do okay and this thing here in the green is a tan function so we'll do that on the next slide right so we get um, 2 tan of 2x plus pi on 3 is equal to 3 and dividing through by 2 we get tan of 2x plus pi on 3 is equal to 3 over 2. So what have I got here? Well this is some kind of graph related to tan. I'll come back and talk about graphical features later on but let's just think about basically what does my tan curve look like. Right really bad bad drawing but it gives us the idea so this is not this graph this is just the graph of tan of x but what we're saying here is we've got a transformed version of that graph we want to know where it equals 3 over 2 so we can think of 3 over 2 as this line here y equals 1.5 and where does it meet this graph so you could chuck that into your graphics calculator if you wanted to get a feel for the problem and that's not a bad thing to do at all but what I'm going to do here is I'm not going to work with the graph I'm going to find the general solutions and then I'm going to find the particular solutions so when we look for general solutions we're looking for all of the points going on forever and ever where this is a true statement okay so this thing is going to be sometimes true and it's going to be true at the values of the blue dots. And the general solution formula for tan goes like this. If I've got tan of x is equal to some number, then x will be this. Right, so this is the easiest of the general solution formulae because the tan graph just repeats every pi so the period is pi and we just have to find our first solution and then look for multiples of pi in both directions so that's what we're going to do now um, working with this equation here okay so tan of 2x plus pi on 3 is equal to 3 over 2 which is 1.5 so step 1 is to find the principal value, so the first value where that is a true statement. So what we're looking for to do that, first we find this, the angle whose tangent is 1.5 and that's not a particularly nice number, that works out to be 0.98279, I've gone to lots of decimal places on purpose, and now what I say is well that's my first value of 2x plus pi on 3. But that's only one value. We want the general solution. So to do that, 
we're going to get rid of the one value and put in n pi plus 0.98279. So we're part of the way there, but our job is to figure out not 2x plus pi on 3, but the x values. So the first thing we do is we're going to subtract pi on 3 from both sides. So we get 2x is equal to n pi minus pi on 3 plus 0.98279. Now notice that I've kept those together and I think of those as the stem or building block of my general solution. It doesn't matter much when we're doing tan questions but it does save me from making silly mistakes when I'm doing the harder sine or cosine ones. So that's step one. So I'm now down to 2x is equal to all of that and I want to get just x. So I have to divide everything through by 2. So n pi on 2 minus pi on 6 plus that number divided by 2. I'm going to try and do that in my head. Mm, this will be interesting. right? This is probably not going to be quite right. So point four nine. Oh, I can nearly do it. One three nine. I think that's right. I'm sure one of you will email me and tell me that I'm wrong if it is. But that is my general solution for um, the equation that we started out with. So we're part of the way there. Um, the next thing we want to do though is to use that to generate the particular solutions in this region. And we're going to do that using this formula. And you can do that on your graphics calculator or you can do it clunkily by hand. Right, so my general solution is this. x is equal to n pi on 2. When I put the numbers together I get minus 0 0.0322. Um, I've done this one quite quickly. Um, so if you do find any mistakes please please send me an email to my school email and let me know. That would be really good. Um, now we're going to start substituting. Now I always start substituting at n equals 0. And so we're going to get our first solution. x equals negative 0.0322. I'm always checking that these are valid solutions because I want to be in this domain. So that's my first one. The next one is going to be x equals pi on 2 minus 0.0322. Right, and now we're going to go to our calculator and we're going to work out what that number is. Um, I'm not doing that because I'd rather spend time making another video on one of the equations ones. But you can do that at home. Then n equals 2, we get x equals pi minus 0.0322. Right, it's pi because up here I'm doing 2 pi over 2. So that's still in my um, domain. They're all good solutions. But I know that that's as high as I have to go. The next one will be above pi. So now I start looking at the negative end. I'm going to go n equals negative 1. x is negative pi on 2 minus 0 0.0322. And lastly I'm going to look at n equals negative 2 and just check. So it'll be negative 2 pi on 2 minus that. So that one was in, but this one is no good because it is less than negative pi. So what we found there are four particular solutions. Now you might want to think about why that makes sense. And to do that I'm going to look briefly at the um, graphical features of the tan equation. Okay, so we've got, let's just look at where we got down to. Well, we had 2 tan of 2x plus pi on 3 was equal to 3. So let's focus on this left-hand side here. Um, now, the amplitude of the tan function doesn't really make any sense because the amplitude of tan goes from negative infinity to infinity, so it's a little bit different. So the amplitude is not defined for tan. Right, looking at this left hand side, there's no vertical shift. And 
and that means the mean value of the function is zero as well. Okay, now we can look at the horizontal shift and we can look at the period. So rewriting, we get 2 tan of 2 times x plus pi on 6 is equal to 3. So focusing on this bit here, we can see a phase shift or horizontal shift of pi on 6 units to the left. And the last thing I'm going to squeeze in on this slide is the period of the function. Right now tan's a little bit different because the standard period is just pi. So when I have the 2 here, the period is going to be pi over 2. Okay, and that means the flip side of that is that the frequency is going to be in one normal cycle of pi, the frequency is going to be 2. Alright, so lots of ideas there. I haven't looked at the graphical features of the left hand side, the sign thing, but you might like to do that when you've finished watching this. Thanks for watching, I'll do some of the other ones later on tonight.